Hey everyone, so I've been getting some messages from y'all about this technique that's floating around. It's got these tucks to it and they turn the tucks into scallops. I don't actually know how the technique is done in the photo, but I can show you how to, I would approach it. And I'm going to take the technique and I'm going to run with it. So I'm going to make it my own and I'm going to add three more embellishments to it. So the, for starters, let's just do the basic th thing that's floating around that y'all want to know how to do. So the basic thing and what you're going to do with any of these methods that I'm about to show you is you're going to have to start with this basic method and that is going to be um, inserting the tucks into your fabric. So I've got some scrap imperial batiste here and I'm just going to run this through my machine. The width of your tuck and the spacing of these tucks are going to greatly to, you know, change the look of this uh, what's it? Uh, of this embellishment. <laughs> That's what I'm looking for. This embellishment. So, play around with it. I am using some Imperial Batiste because I love. Well, y'all have heard me talk about this fabric a time and time again, right? I love this fabric. I love to use it in garments, but I also love to just to play around with it because it is super affordable and it's wide and it can, you know it's light and airy and it can do some fun stuff and. I just, I really love this fabric for a number of reasons. But anyway, right, so we're going to, and I'm just eyeballing this. Y'all can get the idea with it. Um, and when you do it on an actual um, garment, you're going to, actually let me extend that some more. When you do it on an actual garment, of course, um, you're going to take it with a fine tooth comb and measure it all out. And that's what I would do too. But for right now, I am just, you know, getting this video out to y'all. So. I'm going to take this and lick it with my arm. So you can see I've got two tucks spaced however far they are. I'm, like I mentioned, I'm just running through her. And for now, so the whole idea of this is that you're going to take the tucks and you're at this point you're going to decide how, like how wide you want those scallops, okay? So I'm going to put, in my case, I'm just going to do two scallops. I'm just going to put this down somewhat the middle. And I'll have a, a, a tab on either side. So I've got one end, I've got the middle-ish, because I'm not measuring any of this, and I've got the other end, okay. So y'all see that, how I have the three spaced, the three vertical things going here? We're going to do another set of verticals, but now that's going to go over the um this like over the tucks and go the other direction which will turn them into a scallop and really i mean the design could be a scallop down it could be a scallop up because it's sewing so you do you um but so that is how you finish this as you just point her down and i guess an iron let's let's look with the iron so the iron's just going to help it go the direction we want and again i'm just going in the middle ish i would be measuring this if this was on a garment you get my drift. So this is like the basic building block of the whole technique. And now I'm going to take this and I'm going to expand on it. So one thing, let me get some more Imperial Batiste. And with all of these, um, with all of this, I, if I was going to put it onto a garment, I was, I would use, hold on, I'm trying to get the, my voice, my words out before somebody cries. Um, with all of these things, I would use an oversized rectangle. Say you're putting it on a bodice or something, or, or you're putting it on a sleeve or whatever. I would use an oversized rectangle for that pattern piece. That way you're not having to like really think. We got enough stuff going on, okay? We, we're, we're missing enough sleep, at least I know that I am. And so just use an oversized rectangle for whatever pattern piece you're trying to apply it to. And then um, you can just put your pattern piece on top of it when you're done doing the embellishment and, and position, you know, your pattern piece exactly where you want it in relation to uh, the embellishment and for those tucks. So let me expand on this. So I've got three in this case, and I am going to, what am I going to do? This is my first time running through all these, so I'm kind of, I have it in my mind. I just need to figure out what to do to put it down. Okay, we're going to do the same thing with whatever spacing you want. I think I'm going to do a little bit smaller of a spacing this time, but whatever spacing you want, um, we're going to divide up. And so now, this is a method that's expanding on the picture that's floating around, is that you can, um, you can, did I do that right? 
No, I did not do that right. Like I said, this is my first time running through all of these. Okay, okay, so when you do your spacing, when you do your spacing, you're gonna wanna flip every other tuck. So I've got this tuck going down, I need to flip this tuck so it's going up, and then this tuck is still going down. Like this, and now from here, this, well, this um, scallop will go this direction. This scallop will go the other direction, and then this one will go this direction, and it will kind of make this interesting design. And particularly if you have a bunch of these, this could look really cool. This is reminding me a little bit of the New Year's dress that I made for Audrey with all those beads on it. And you could, let me, okay, let me, let me finish one thing at a time. I'm trying to get all my words out. This sort of stuff makes me excited, like taking something and running with it. I, I think that's so fun. I can't get this the guy to lay down. Um, I think that's so fun. I, I don't know what it is about pictures and like, I'm not good at a lot of things, but for whatever reason, like a good percent of the time, I can take a photo and just sort of figure it out. And I'm not saying that like I'm ex I'm an expert or anything like that, and I'm not saying that I'm doing it the same way that it's done in the photo, but I can get I can get um, I can get to the same sort of look. Generally speaking, there's a couple there's a couple things where I'm like, I look at the photo, I'm like, how did they do that? But generally, I can like muscle my way through it, you know, and kind of make it work. Like I said, I'm not trying to toot my horn up any, any means. I'm plenty horrible at a lot of stuff, but for whatever reason, I can generally, if I've got a good photo, I can figure it out. So you can kind of see where I'm going with this, and that you're gonna, it's gonna create little pockets. And so if you were to have a whole bunch of these and they were to be like little tiny things and spaced together, um, you could have it to the point that these little things are touching, you know, like the little, um, like that, like the little tucks, you could have it spaced out like that. So the tucks are going to meet like that and have a little pocket for you. Then you could put like, uh, like from the, the New Year's dress, that, like that little bead cluster, you could put a bead cluster in there. You could put some embroidery work in there. It would be just fun, right? To do a bunch of different things. You could put a fun little button in there. That would be cute. Um, so yeah, so that's one way you can expand on this. Another way, this is going to be kind of neat. So, this is going to take two pieces of fabric. It's going to require that your outside fabric, let me lick this with the iron. It's going to require that your outside fabric is a little bit sheer, which is great because Imperial Tease is. And I've grabbed this blue. This is not the shade of blue that I would use for this, but you're going to get the drift from it. From it. So, I'm just going to cut a little... This is just a run through it, but you're going to get the idea. So I'm just going to cut a little strip. If I was doing this for real, I would use a rotary cutter and make it all nice and all the rest of it. Um, like I said, I'm trying to run through this before somebody starts crying. I'm not sure when Daisy's going to want to take it out. My sew line glue pen is like supposed to be in here. sew line glue pen handy, this would be a great time to take your sew line glue pen and I and uh, use that to secure it down. That's a great little pen. I'm going to pretend <laughs> like I've done that. So you've like put the little glue on the back, put the strip down where you want it. Of course, use a rotary cutter if you're doing this on an actual garment. That way the edges would be clean. But you see where I'm going with this. And this, whatever the fabric that you're inserting, that should be the width or maybe just a hair smaller um, than the width of your tuck because you're going to enclose you're going to enclose the fabric into that tuck, okay? So now you're going to have like a shadow tuck. I've done the shadow tuck before. I did it before for a dress um, for like this uh, butterfly dress I made for Audrey a few years back and so if this was a prettier blue not that this is this is okay not that this isn't a pretty blue but this is not the blue that I'm going for in this thing but if you can imagine this is like a lighter blue whatever now we're going to take the you know same sort of thing we're going to do the edges down 
So this one I just done a, a big one, but you gotta understand that what I'm getting at. So this is, if you can imagine, this is more of a blue, like a blue with the water. Um, then I've tucked the edge ends down like we've done the other, you know, like we've done with this whole uh, technique. And then I've done the middle down, and if you can imagine, I've got several of these. This could be like a little wave, right? And you can embroider a little duck up here. How sweet would that be, right? Or you could have this be green and then have a bunch of like grass and you have a little bunch of flowers like they're popping out of the grass that'd be really cute too um so there's a bunch of things take it and run with it like make it your own all the rest of it one last thing for this technique that you can do let me get another square or rectangle whatever okay we're going to pretend this blue fabric this is imperial batista as well if you're curious um we're going to pretend that this blue fabric is lace because I am not, oh, actually, no, let's do this. This, it would be better to pretend it's lace. I don't actually want to like, um, you know, like put French lace on this <laughs> as a scrap thing. So let's pretend that this is the lace. And what we can do is we can have our tuck. Let's just put a tuck in here. And we can put the lace, so we've got our tuck, if we would pretend this is um, like lace edging, that way the little scallop edge would be showing, you know, and you've got the header that you're going to secure, you get my drift? Um, so you're going to secure your lace, and you can, I mean, depending on your lace, you move it whatever way, right, does that all make sense? So... And this would just be a straight stitch, like in real life too. I would just straight stitch this because you're you're putting on the header, right? And everything else is in, is enclosed. So let me trim up the edges of our of our false lace. So now with this thing, you can imagine as we put. We're going to do the same sort of thing with the scallops, but you can imagine now it's got a little bit of a lace to it, especially if you were to, well, let me not say all that. So you do your vertical ends like normal, like the spacing that we've done with the other embellishments, but then when it comes to making um, the little scallop parts, what I would do is I would just tuck up the lace part. I wouldn't tuck up the fabric in this case. I would just tuck up the lace. See how I've like, if you can imagine, like, once again, this is lace. So this is our lace edging with the pretty scalloped edge and maybe some little picots or something. And so you'd have this neat little look that, that as the lace comes up and down and it could go, you know, shoo, 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 all across a bodice. So um, different techniques to expand on the, the like base technique, if you will. Um, anywho. That's how I would do it again. I don't know how to do it in the photo. I've got other um, videos on neat embellishment techniques. I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below, and I will do my best to answer them. And as always, I appreciate y'all for watching, and I hope to catch y'all next time.